This is a magic pebble. This magic pebble can infinitely stagger big, heavy enemies. This magic pebble can stagger someone in PvP to the point where they cannot react, they cannot roll, they're now caught out, and the follow-up attack is likely to kill them. This pebble can stagger full-on endgame bosses, which hey, gives me the opportunity to buff up a dagger with Royal Knight's Resolve, increasing its damage, and then doing ridiculous critical hits and burning through their health bars. And this magic pebble is something you can get very early in the game at Stormvale Castle. And this magic pebble is not even a spell. It's an ash of war that anyone can use. We can apply it to swords like straight swords or rapiers and pole arms like spears or halberds even. So let me explain the actual ash of war then, the glintstone pebble. How it works is you can just fire out this little pebble that is short to medium range. If it catches someone though, it will do good damage and also really good posture damage for some reason. Shockingly good. Infinitely staggering big PvE enemies or in PvP, if you do not have super high poise and get hit by this, I was testing with Josh, you cannot roll out of this. So the follow-up attack is going to hit you and that follow-up attack really hurts. All that follow-up attack is, is pressing R2, the heavy attack, after doing the pebble. So it like lights up your weapon, you charge and thrust forward, and yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. In PvP against the gank squads, this has been a godsend. While I'm chasing some dude around with my halberd trying to catch him while he's trying to heal, and the other guy's coming up behind me, he doesn't really expect me to turn around, throw a pebble at him, and then kill him instantly. But hey, it's what happens. This has been a gift in my PvP today, and so fun, because I just keep finding gank squads, and it's so good against them. What's interesting is, what qualifies as an enemy you can stagger with this pebble is, yeah, surprisingly, uh, varied. Like, that's a mini stagger. Mini stagger, mini stagger, mini stagger, full stagger, walk up with dagger, get extra crit damage. Like, these guys are big, they're annoying, you know, they're... They're a bit of a nightmare to fight, and the best part about this build as well is the fact that I did all of that, and then I have all of the mana that it cost me. So let's just do it again. So I'm game. I'm doing gameplay right now. I'm currently gaming at this time. And uh, yeah, there's the stagger. Then you can obviously buff up and go for the crit, which I was too slow. Not that it matters, but ideally be, you know, right up against them if you're going to do the RKR uh, buff before you go for the crit. Another aspect then of the pebble in PvE is just so good for open world when you're dealing with multi-targets. I can kill one target with a pebble and then do the follow-up attack and swap my focus to charge into another target. Or throw the pebble at some guy who's blocking and watch how it does nothing to protect them. It feels really good. It looks really good and it costs so little fp to be so effective all right so that's how it works that's what's happening it's pretty cool but let me explain how you can do it yourself so as you can see i'm i'm using the lucerne here but actually the the source of the the ash of war can be found on this glintstone sword the glintstone pebble is part of this sword and it's interesting it's a really cool looking weapon it's actually a wooden sword and yeah it comes with the pebble it's just part of its kit its ar is not bad 598. You can see a few clips of me using it to begin with when we were starting our testing. And yeah, you can see that when I land this blow, it is very effective. The follow attack is really good damage. But what if we could one-shot the guys that are taking these big hits and just surviving? What if we can increase the damage by a significant amount? Well, as we know that this Ash of War can be put on other weapons. So we try it with Roja's Rapier, which is a really solid dex weapon. Josh was testing this and found roughly 660 AR on that. But what about the bigger, heavier weapons, the more powerful weapons? What about Partisan, like the Spears? Or the Halberds, like Lucerne here, which is, as you can see, the one that I picked. Because yeah, this is the highest AR I can find on a weapon that will allow this. We've got 685 AR when I'm one-handing. It goes up ever so slightly to 688 when we two hand. This is by scaling it with magic using the affinity whetstones. And as you can see, it scales at a B rating with intelligence and sort of a quality build with strength and dex at both an E rating. So if we take a look at my stats to make this possible, you can see that I've stuck with 22 strength and dex to have that quality. And then we've maxed out at the soft cap of 80 for intelligence. That was giving me the most AR possible and allowing me to one shot people in PVP and do the most damage I can really get away with in PVE. Beautifully though, in PVE, we're able to 
swap to our dagger in time to pull it out and then take the critical hit on that stagger. But what you're seeing me do before I do that is buff up with Royal Knight's Resolve, which is going to increase the damage my next single attack is going to do, increasing the damage of the crit. But why are we even using a dagger? What's the point of that? Well, daggers in the Souls series have always kind of done more critical damage. It's the same in Elden Ring, but even more so when you use something like Royal Knight's Resolve. And then the Hornet's Ring of this game, the Dagger Talisman, enhances critical hits even more. So, like in this boss fight against Moog, when I'm getting the eventual stagger by throwing enough pebbles and hitting him enough times, I can run up, buff up, and take this ridiculous crit damage, burning through the boss's health bar. The Misery Cord here is actually a great option. This is the highest damage we could get from a dagger on a critical hit like that, so I fully recommend this specific dagger. Obviously, for this kind of build, Shard of Alexander, like most builds that are using Ashes of War as part of its main damage, it's going to increase the damage of your skills, your Ashes of War. For some nice utility and quality of life for general PvE gameplay, I've got the Assassin's Cerulean Dagger, which is going to give me FP back every time I get one of those crits which is really nice because I can just walk around getting all the mana back. The Carrion Filigree Crest, well this is going to be really nice in any gameplay, PvP or PvE, because yes, I'm going to be able to use the Pebble way more for less mana. In PvP, I'm not planning on using the Dagger Talisman because I'm not looking for the types of parries, so something defensive like the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, well that's a great option. And in the same notion, we can remove the Cerulean Dagger for something else. Something like Erd Tree's Favor is really nice. Perhaps one of the Scar or Saw Seals. Ultimately, as long as your Pebble is strong, this build is going to be strong. Let's quickly talk about locations of everything then, shall we, that matters. Starting with the Dagger Talisman, you want to come to the Volcano Manor here at the northern point of the map, making your way to the temple. And after defeating the boss in this area, the elevator will activate, and then we just have to go up there. We follow the elevator around to the point where we have to jump off the balcony and progress through the lava area in a pretty much straight line. After moving back inside, after following that route around the lava, you're going to come past this lovely fire whip snake guy. We're going to run past him and go inside. Upon reaching this large room with the bobble snake head wizard person, we're going to turn around and come up here, and you're going to need a stone sword key to get past the fog wall in this room. Use the key, go inside, and on our right, under us, is a drop. Careful to drop down here without falling to our death which then takes us back inside and we follow this around. And as you reach this really annoying saucer at the top of the staircase, you come back outside and on your right is a body. That body has the talisman on it. A little bit convoluted, but there you go. Alexander's talisman is extremely important. You're going to be using that in a lot of builds in this game. And it comes as part of Alexander's quest line. At the very end of that quest line, he will ask you to fight him. And after you defeat him, he will give you his talisman. Or you can kill him at any point in the game really early and get a weaker version if you really want to do that. To get the Assassin's Cerulean Dagger, you're going to want to come to the lake region on the northeastern point, and you need to come to the Black Knife Catacombs, which is around here up this path. Uh, once you go in, you need to go defeat the boss, and that will drop you the talisman. For your carry and filigree crest, then, you're going to need to convince Iggy that you're cool. Uh, he can be found here at the road to Manor on the west side of the lake region, just before Carrier Manor. He's a giant blacksmith, and if you meet Blaith in Limgrave and tell him that you're friends with him, he will then offer to sell you that talisman. Or we can go over to Rani's Rise, go speak with Rani, do the storyline there, and become friends with him that way. Ultimately, buying it from him is how I got it. For our weapons, the Lucerne to begin with is the Halberd of Choice that we're running. And you can find that here at the southeastern point of the lake region, or the Leonia Highway North Grace. And it's just here on a body on that mark. We just have to pick it up here, quite near this uh, ghost fight that's occurring. To get the Misery Cord then, you need to come back to Stormvale Castle, and the nearest grace is going to be the Rampart Tower. As we turn around away from that grace and come out here on our left, we have an elevator that will lead us down to sort of the mess hall. You should recognize this room because it has that really annoying grafted enemy inside of it. Facing that portrait or the grafted enemy, you turn left and come outside. And once again on your left, you're going to have another stone sword wall that you need to use and unlock. And inside we've got some enemies, but on one of these bodies is the dagger that you're here for. I've had a really good time today in PvP against the gank squads with this though. They seriously just don't expect this pebble to <laughs> full stagger them to the point where I can get that follow up and then they just die. I just can't believe how you can get this so early in the game as well, how strong it actually is. But that has been the Glintstone Pebble build. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please drop a like so we can keep making more videos like this and other builds. But until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.